Those things in the title are called Grawlixes, by the way. Oh, and yeah, Johnny Appleseed was f***ing real. Johnny Appleseed, American folk hero, Apple enthusiast, and Dr. Keeper Awayer, was born John Chapman on September 26, 1774 in Leominster, Massachusetts. His love for apples and nature began when he apprenticed as an orchardist and he decided that he would live a nomadic life, traveling the frontier and spreading seeds. And by seeds, I mean Swedenborgian seeds. No, that's not a type of apple, that's a Christian denomination based on the teachings of Emanuel Swedenborg. And yes, Swedenborg was Swedish, imagine that. Most of Johnny's time was spent as a missionary. He stayed at the homes of those he preached to, sleeping on floors and the such. And as he traveled spreading the word, he also set up apple nurseries. Yes, Johnny didn't typically plant apple orchards, he made nurseries. Where trees could be grown, maintained, and then eventually sold. He did this ahead of settlers so that as people began to trickle into an area, there was Johnny ready to sell them apple trees. Now keep in mind here that the trees he was planting weren't the you're gonna want to eat these type, much more the hey these are too bitter to eat but we can make them into hard cider type. And yeah, apple cider used to be significantly more popular than it is now, in fact pretty much until prohibition the vast vast majority of apples were used for making alcohol. Either plain old hard cider or apple brandy made from aging the cider or even apple jack. No not that one, no not that really? Yes, that one, which is made from freezing cider and then draining off the pure alcohol. Mmm, squeezins. Something that should be added here, Johnny used seeds rather than splicing. Splicing is where you basically combine two plants into one. It's how, well, pretty much every plant that we eat came to be in the form it currently has. By using seeds, he maintained more of a purity for the strain, but more often than not produced basically what we would call crab apples. Okie dokie. We're not quite sure when he died, some list his death as occurring in 1845, others as 1847. His gravestone seen here, we think, we're not 100% sure where he's buried. Says 1845, so that's what we're going with. An obituary for him did appear in the March 27, 1845 edition of the Goshen Democrat, and it read, In Fort Wayne on Tuesday 18th, it's John Chapman, commonly known by the name of Johnny Appleseed, about 70 years of age. Many of our citizens will remember this eccentric individual as he sauntered through town eating his dry rusk and cold meat and freely conversing on the mysteries of his religious faith. He was a devout follower of Emanuel Swedenborg and notwithstanding his apparent poverty was reputed to be in good circumstances. When he died, he left behind quite a bit of acreage, over 1,200 across Indiana and Ohio. He's become rather important to Fort Wayne as well, with him holding a yearly festival in his honor, and they even named their minor league baseball team after him. Yes, he carried a sack of apple seeds with him at most times. He was probably typically barefoot, he didn't wear a pot on his head, but supposedly he did wear a tent hat that he sometimes ate out of. So yeah, I can kind of see how that leap was made. And one last thing, if you hate dog fennel, well guess what, you've got Johnny to blame for that too. He also planted the weed as he traveled because he believed that it had medicinal properties. In truth, it's actually poisonous and causes liver failure, so good job there Johnny. 